This is my blue tongue kink cage. So here we have a heat lamp, 100 watts, UVA, UVB. See right there? Yeah, it's pretty warm right here, probably like 9,500. I got a rock right there, sterilized. I boiled it in hot water just to kill all the bacteria and all that. Got that right here. I got, um, hmm, Repti Bark. Yeah, for substrate, I used Repti Bark right here. Mixed with cypress, no, uh, sphagnum moss and coconut fiber. There's coconut fiber in the bottom there. You can see it. It's like the dirt looking stuff. Yeah, it's coconut fiber. So, yeah, guys, I'm getting an Iron J uh, Blue Tongue Skink named Vindy. I already found out the name. Uh, based on the crocodile hunter's daughter. I used to watch him all the time when I was little. It's a real shame what happened to him. But, um,. Yeah, this is my leopard gecko, and for my leopard gecko's substrate, I use all coconut fiber. So this is all coconut fiber. So I'm mixing coconut fiber, those chips, and the moss to all hold humidity because the iron jays need a little bit more humid than the Australian species of blue tongue skink. So basically, I ordered it off of a breeder, super, super nice guy, and um, it should be coming in any minute now. I'm super excited. I've been tracking the order and I can't wait to do an unboxing. So basically I had this warm side. So I have the, this is a 75 gallon tank by the way guys. I have a heat mat up there. I have a humidity gouge and a temperature gouge. I have a big water dish just in case he wants to go inside of it. Uh, a food dish right there. I have a hide, which is like, it's half warm, half cool, because I heard Blue Tongue Kings don't really like hides that much. They'll use it once in a while, but most of the time they just burrow. So I have a lot of substrate right here. It's really, really thick in substrate. So that's where I can just go and burrow. And then I have this piece of cork bark, just uh, for enrichment, and it holds humidity pretty well. So, um, yeah, that's it. The temperatures over here stay from like 75 to 80. Over here, it's like 80 to 85. And over here, it's like 95 to 100. This rock's usually 100 or maybe a little bit warmer than 100 just for belly heat. Um, and yeah, I also have a piece of newspaper right under the heat, right above the heat mat on the glass just so the skink, if it buries right here, it won't burn itself because the glass gets pretty hot with the heat mat. So yeah, that's the setup. Oh yeah, and I also built this little makeshift lid out of um, cardboard it fits perfectly and then I covered it in this clear tape so that it won't get all soggy sorry try to use one hand it won't get all soggy with the humidity and yeah it goes on just goes on just like that and yeah, that's basically my setup. And then for my night bulb, I have it right in here. I have a 75 watt, 75 watt, just um, red heat heat bulb. And it works fine. It keeps the temperatures over here from like 90, around 90, 85 to 90. And then over here it gets to like 70 to 75. Because it's naturally, it cools down at night. So yeah. And then I also have all my supplies. I have some supplies here. Like, I have a bunch of extra moss here and some chips. And then here I have crickets, all my vitamins. I have calcium with D3, uh, multivitamins, and then some more calcium with D3. I have a mist bottle. I have uh, distilled water, some more distilled water. Um, I have cricket food. I have some calcium and multivitamins mixed. That's to powder on the crickets. And then most importantly, actually not most importantly, but pretty important, I have a heat gun. This thing can tell the temperature. And it works really, really well. It doesn't work too well. Like, it's not exact. So see, it shows like 99, around, no, 94, my bad. So it's like, over here, it's a good 95 to 100 degrees. It gets more like 100, 102 on the rock, just because the surface of the rock is really warm. But yeah. That's really it, guys. So, um, I can't wait till I get this kink, and I'll show you an unboxing and all that. It should be 
super, super exciting. And there's Milapur Gecko once again. Giggy. Little tangerine. Okay, guys, I'll be back with the unboxing. Okay, guys. Here it is. So I want to be really, really gentle and really, really calm with this animal because it's going to be very stressed out. I'm super excited. But let's get this open. Okay, one more. Let's oh, probably take off the shipping label. Okay, here we go. Thank you for your purchase. This guy is so nice. Follow him guys, at Skinkerdoodles on Facebook. And yeah, super, super nice. Let's check this little dude out. Sweet. Chester, come here. Come here, Chester. Come here. Chester, come here. Sit. Sit. Go boy. Stay. I want to show you the lizard. Oh my goodness. <laughs> this is it. Holy crap. Let me set up the camera. Let's see again. I'll be right back. Okay. Here it is. The Irene Jaya. Just got to get through the zip tie. Almost through. These are pretty dull scissors. There we go. Zip tie. Now we can untie it. So we've got one more knot. I'm so excited. moving. <laughs> it's alive. Oh my god, it's so small. I can feel it right now. Let me turn the camera around. Oh, it's right there. Look at how pretty. I want to get bit. It's probably really stressed out. Oh, look at the little head. Oh my goodness, it's so cute. <laughs> it's so small. Oh my goodness, I'm just gonna... Slowly pull the bag, let it come out on the table. Actually, I'm gonna put it, by the way guys, I made this big box with some um, newspaper, and it's basically gonna be my live feeding box for this little dude, because I uh, have crickets and stuff, so when I'm gonna live feed this little dude, actually, I shouldn't be calling it a dude. His name's Bindi, and we're gonna assume it's a female. But um, this little guy, not guy either. I don't know, this little animal, um, I'm going to put it in here and put the crickets in. So um, this is perfect just in case it gets really stressed and runs. It's, it'll be in here. Just going to slowly. Come here, buddy. Oh, the little claws. Oh, there's a little head. Oh, oh my goodness, it's so cute. Come on, little buddy. 
Just smell in the air. And then poke its body, it'll run out. Come on. Come on, little guy. Seems really calm, even for being stressed. Oh my god. How pretty. Oh my goodness. Look at him or her. I can't even tell. Oh my gosh. That's it compared to my hand. Look at how pretty. Don't bite me. No, I know, I know you're stressed. I'm gonna bring you to your little habitat. Oh my goodness. Holy crap, let me turn the camera around. Actually, I'm gonna just use two hands in case she's just so she doesn't fall. <clears throat> and I'm gonna bring her up to my room. She is beautiful. Holy cow. Such a pretty little guy. A little skittish, but I mean, she's stressed out right now. She's being pretty calm and she's not breathing too heavy. Um, oh my god, she's so pretty. Can't even believe this. Okay, I'll be back with her in her terrarium. Uh, instantly, she went right into this little, this little hide. You can see her tail right there to the left. Uh, I just re-misted it so it's nice and humid. See some of the humidity, or see some of the uh, water droplets over there. Um, yeah, so pretty. I'm so unbelievably happy with this animal. I can't believe it. You can see her head right there. She's just relaxing, really stressed out. So I'm gonna leave her here for, you know, a couple of hours before I handle her again. I'm gonna try and feed her probably in a couple of hours. And then maybe I'll take her out a little bit just so you can get a little bit comfortable with me uh, or whatever. But yeah, I'm gonna let her just explore. She's moving already. She's moving around. See her tail. Yeah, but um, I hope she likes it. I mean, she's really small for this giant tank, so I might put up. I might put a couple small water dishes, or I might put like another water dish over. Actually, I don't know where I put. I probably put it right in the middle there, and then I might put another food bowl or whatever. <coughs> but for now, the temperatures are perfect. Um, she's like in a little hide right now. Hopefully she can, hopefully she'll bur burrow around. Hopefully she'll eat later today. I might feed her just something like a fruit, something that's like not really good for her. It won't be like a full meal, but it'll just be a snack so she can get used to it and know where her food dish is. Um, we're rudely interrupted by my sister FaceTiming me. She's super excited about this lizard too. Same with my cousin. They all want to see it. I... Honestly, I could not be happier. This lizard is so incredibly beautiful. I'm so happy I got this lizard. I I can't even like talk right now. I spent so much money on this lizard and it's all worth it. And I'm so excited to finally have her. I've been waiting a while. She's still chilling in there. Uh, I'll give her a while. She probably won't come out for another like half an hour to an hour. She's probably just, you know, getting the feel for her surroundings, but I can see her, uh, you can't really see it, but her tongue's flickering once in a while just to smell the air. But I am unbelievably happy right now. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something about maybe your setup or anything. If you guys want to know feeding, I have a bunch, I did a bunch of research. I know I, I have already a plan of what to feed her. Um, <coughs> yeah, just leave it in the comment section if you like this video in general. If you want to see more about my skink, Bindi. Um, yeah. And I'll see you guys next time.